Kleiner, or generalist and lightweight model for named entity extraction is, as the name suggests, an entity extraction library. It's an alternative to traditional NER models, which can only use predefined entities and LLMs that are very flexible, but can take a long time to come up with a response. Let's have a look how it works in the IPython shell. So we're going to import Gliner, we're going to import the time module, and then we're going to also import the rich console. Let's load one of the Gliner models. So we're going to use Gliner base. There is also Gliner small, Gliner medium, and Gliner large, but I found that Gliner base seems to work the best. Now the model is stored alongside other hugging face models in the home directory dot cache hugging face. But when I looked in that directory for Gliner, I couldn't find anything. And the reason is clear if we look at the config files. So you can see in there that the model name is actually Microsoft forward slash Deberta forward slash v3 forward slash base. So let's have a look for that instead. And you can see it comes back with the model. You can see we've got a config JSON, we've got a PyTorch file, and then we've got a couple of other files as well. Let's see how it works. So we're going to look at an article from the ClickHouse blog about a tool called Atlas, which you can use for schema evolution. Uh, so let's load that file into a variable called text. And then what we need to do is specify some labels that we want to try and find in the text. So I'm going to say there's a programming language, a database, types of database, and then the dates, and we'll see how it does. And so we can call the model predict entities function. We pass in the text and then we pass in our labels and then let's print out the result. And you can see it comes back. So it's got early 2010s as a date. We've got Python, we've got JavaScript, MongoDB, uh, so the first two programming languages and then database. And it's also got Elasticsearch and ClickHouse. And you can see it's an array. It also tells us where the start index for each term was and where the end index was too. Now to render it, what we really need to do is go and fill in those gaps. We're going to build up like a whole list of every part of the text rather than just the entity. So I'm going to write a function called fill gaps to do that. And we're going to start by iterating over the pairs of entities and we'll add a chunk to fill in the gap. It won't have any uh, labels uh, for that particular bit. It's just going to be the, the plain text. And then we'll fill in if there's a gap at the beginning and also a gap at the end as well. And now let's try and see what happens if we call the fill gaps function with the entities and the text. And you can see it comes back. So you can see it's filled in the beginning in the then we've got early 2010s, that was in there already. And the next bit dynamically typed languages like, and so on. And so now we'll be able to iterate through that list of chunks and then print it out to the screen. But before that, we're gonna try and color in the label. So I've got a function called color code four. So we can pass in a label and it will generate us a color code. So let's call that for all of our labels and you can see it comes back. So we've got programming language has got a color, database has got a color and date has also got a color. Let's now call a render labels function where we'll pass in those codes and then we're going to iterate over them and render them to the screen so that we'll know what labels we're working with. We'll just have a quick look how that works. So you can see it comes back. We've got programming language in one color, database in a different color, and then date in a third color. Let's also wrap the render text function with the colors. And so we're going to iterate over our chunks. We're going to look up and see whether or not there's a label in there. So remember, some of them will have labels, some of them won't. If you've got a label, we're going to put it bold white on the particular color for that label. Otherwise, we'll just do it white on black and then we'll print out the result. Let's give that function a try. And you can see it comes back in the early 2010s highlighted dynamically typed languages like Python highlighted and JavaScript highlighted and and sort of so on. And so you can see it's gone and highlighted all the entities that it's pulled out. Let's put all of that together into a function called annotate text. So we're going to render the labels and we're also going to render the text. But what we're also going to do an extra thing is we're going to time how long it takes to predict the entities just before we render the text and then we'll print out the time taken at the end. Now let's have a look for another bit of data. So I've got a tennis article from the BBC about Andy Murray losing a match yesterday. So let's see whether we can find some entities in here. So we're going to say person, location, event and score. Let's see how it does. So we're going to run that function. So you can see it comes back. So it's got the people pretty well. So Andy Murray, Thomas Matchak, it's got Cameron Norrie, Daniel Medvedev. That's worked pretty well. Location, it got, uh, it, yeah, it didn't really get any location. I guess there wasn't really a location in here. Event, we've got the Miami open, so that's good. Score is kind of a bit weird. Like it, the score should kind of cover the whole thing, but it's got sort of individual sets sometimes. That hasn't really worked uh, very well. So I suppose it's probably likely there wasn't much tennis data uh, in the training data. Let's try one more. So this is an article about the stability AI founder and chief executive uh, resigning and then who's taking over uh, from them. 
uh, after their resignation. So again, we'll load the file. This time we'll look for an organization, a person and uh, technology as well. And then we'll annotate that text. Uh, so you can see this comes back. This is done reasonably well. So it's found the uh, organization, so stability. Or this one, it's got stability rather than stability AI. Uh, it's got light speed venture partners. That's worked quite well. It's also got uh, COA, I know, COA2 management, I think is how, how you say it. And then you can see it's also pulled out the people uh, reasonably well. And then we've just got AI uh, highlighted loads of times uh, as the uh, technology. Notice also that we've, that we've printed the time. So this one took 0 0.65 seconds. That's pretty pretty quick for, for, for how big uh, the amount of text that we are trying to annotate is. So if you like this video, you might also like this one up here where we look at how to use LLM Wears Slim models, which are tuned for one specific task.